won't remove it for me, and they shouldn't have a problem doing that. Thanks for no your help. Problem. Okay. You're welcome. Sure. All right, have more. a good day. You Bye. too. Bye. Get that shit off my report. <laughs> have you ever went to go apply to buy your car, your house, your apartment, your furniture, apply to start your own business, and you get turned down by this thing called credit? What? How did you feel? Did you feel upset? Did you feel limited? Did you feel that your dreams just got evaporated and you're locked down by this thing called credit score? Well, in this episode, I'm going to share with you the lessons in this packet that I learned to turn my life around and how millionaires buy their houses, their cars, their mansions, build their businesses. In this episode of the Seven Fear Squad happening in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And I promise you, when we Open up this episode. I promise you I will share with you this packet. So please, I would imagine expectations right now. Please don't unsubscribe. Please don't unfollow. Please don't judge a brother.com about what I'm about to share with you. Because I'm about to share with you something that was a very painful event in my life. I went through a, 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 a financial disruption uh, in 1995 when I got married. <laughs> And then the same year, got divorced. But the next year, guess what happened? Filed for bankruptcy. So in this packet, I want to share with you my bankruptcy. I went bankrupt here, man. Uh, I had 22000 Look at this, guys. I went $22,000 in credit card debt. I'm sorry, secured car loans. Two, I had two cars. I had a Suzu Trooper. I had a Honda Civic. And $12,000 in unsecured credit, which was credit cards, for a total amount of $34,000 of total owings that I owed somebody else. I filed bankruptcy for 34 grand. You know why? Because I was financially panicking because I was making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marine Corps. Horrible experience. Horrible experience. You know why? The reason why I filed bankruptcy is I was talking to the wrong people. The only good thing that came out of that scenario for me was the lessons learned about what I'm about to share with you right now. And now, currently, my 25-year-old son, Ruben Sapala. So, love you, handsome, if you're watching this video. But listen, when I'm, when I'm talking about money, when I'm talking about a very disturbing por portion of my life, which was filing for bankruptcy, I felt humiliated. I felt like I had nowhere to go. Every time my $850 paycheck would come in, $600 would leave. And I'd left like 50 bucks, 100 bucks a month. And to me, I was financially panicking. I mean, up to here where I couldn't breathe in terms of bills, it's not even my head above water. It was like I was drowning in debt. I couldn't even figure out my job role because I was so consumed in debt. I was so consumed about my financial situation. And one of the things that when we're counseling Marines is we're always asking them about their financial condition. And I was setting a very, very, very poor example for my fellow Marines because instead of focusing on the mission at hand, I was focusing on my financial situation, which would reduce my morale my effectiveness as a warrior on the battlefield. And so I was doing a very poor job of setting example for my fellow Marines. So I needed to turn my life around. And bankruptcy was a temporary, but it was a very long fought solution because I didn't realize that for years after that, see, this is when 1996, by the way, this is 1996. It's 2021 now. So this is years ago. But it took me years later after that to start rebounding because guess what happened? The bankruptcy stayed on my credit for a very long time. And just want to let you know, since then, I've never filed for bankruptcy, never filed for, for a relief, didn't even file for the PPP loan during this pandemic, didn't file for any stimulus check application. So the lessons learned for me was to never be in that financial position again. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you a few things. So your financial kingdom will be ruled by this trinity. It'll be ruled by your credit and your credit score, okay? It'll be ruled by the money that you make, your management of your money, and also the cash that you have on hand. Now, as you're following the Seven Figure Squad, we're gonna talk about these other two. But right now, we're just gonna talk about credit score. It is such an important thing because a lot of things that cost in your life might increase because of a bad credit score. 
the neighborhood you live in, you may not want to live in there, but that's only not only neighborhood you can afford, but that's the only neighborhood that will approve you based on credit to live there. The, the store, the place where you buy furniture, uh, the places where you buy insurance, car insurance, even life insurance, your credit rating and your credit score has a, a risk factor associated. So a lot of people say, wait, 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 what does my credit score have to do with my ability to pay car insurance? What does my ability to pay my credit, my bills have to do with my life insurance? Well, it's showing the underwriter that you will be paying the premiums. Do you know why that's important? Because if they're forking out a check, when you will face a tragedy in your life and you're not good with paying your premiums based on the underwriting proof that you're able to submit pre-application during the application, you might be saying, I'm a risk, financially speaking, through your credit score. And they may not want to approve you, or if they approve you, they'll jack up a rate just a little bit more because they realize they're taking on an additional risk. Here's another thing I want you to know too as well. What's going on in the marketplace today is that the federal funds rate is so low. So what does that mean to you? It means the corporate bond rate or the bonds rate of America is also low. And guess what matters about the corporate bond rate or the federal funds rate? Is the interest rate of which banks lend money to you. So to the borrower, it's awesome because you can borrow money at cheap. But to the investor of which these insurance companies and, and, and uh, 401k companies base their risks on, they're getting paid less for the bonds that they're investing. So therefore, the promise to pay you is tighter and they can only afford to approve certain people based on the credit rating because there's only such limited, such smaller margin these days because of a lower interest rate in the environment, in, in the bond rate environment. And so therefore, their application is a little bit more and more stringent. So let's discuss real quick credit scores, right? And this is, uh, uh, I'm using, there's two different styles. There's Advantage and FICO. I'm using FICO as an example, uh, credit score model. But anywhere between a 300 and 579 credit score is considered poor. By the way, if I ask you a question, what's your credit score, you don't know. Chances are you're poor or fair. Because 580 to 669 credit score is fair credit. So therefore, they can probably issue you things, or you can buy certain things at the fair credit rating, but it's going to cost you 20, 30% interest versus having a good credit score at 670 to 739 credit score will allow them to drop the interest rate on you because then you're showing that you're less of a risk and that you have the ability to pay consistently based on your history. And that's what it reflects on your credit score. Now, the big ball is showing up here. 740 to 799 is called excellent credit. In other words, you can walk into a dealership and uh, say, hey, I want that, I want that. I'll either want to pay, uh, uh, pay it, uh, buy it, or I want to lease it. And in short order, they'll issue you the car loan. In short order, they'll be able to drive home. Now, where I was sitting when I was in the military, I'd go to the Santa Ana Auto Mall right there off Edinger. You guys know in Southern California what I'm talking about, off the 55. And I'd sit there, I came back from the deployment, I had a check in hand, I had little credit, zero credit, because I wasn't aware of, the, of these two. I was sitting in Porta Fair Credit. And uh, I, I said, yeah, I like to buy that car, naive. I like to buy that car, I like this Isuzu Trooper, I like this Jeep Cherokee, and great. And the car salesman asked me, well, oh, great. Um, would you, would, you, uh, would you like to take this home? I said, I I'd love to take this home. She says, well, what type of car payment are you looking to fit yourself in? I'm looking to fit myself in a $350 a month car payment. Bam. Come in. I fill out the application. 30 minutes later, I'm sitting there. What, what the heck's going on? Finally comes back, comes back with his manager. Listen, I would love for you to have this car, but your payment's going to go to $550 a month. What? Well, I said $350. Well, do you want to go home with the car or not? Yeah. We need $500, $500 down payment. So all those different things happen in the car buying process. And by the way, the same thing happens too when you're purchasing a home. You're, you're buying a condo. You're buying an apartment. You're, you're applying for a loan to start your business. A lot of these things start happening based on your ability to expand the financial uh, resources, the financial assets that you're looking to acquire. And again, back to the Trinity. You need a credit score. You need cash on cash on hand to help building your financial kingdom here on, on earth. And these are the things that are necessary for you to be aware of because it's going to hurt you in the long run, and it's going to cost you more money unnecessarily. Therefore, you can put money inside your pocket, or you can put the money inside somebody else's pocket. Your credit score will determine that by based on where you rank in your credit score. So when you're looking at this, the average person in America, according to the FICO, 67% of America, they say, is right here, right here in the middle. 67% of people, they say, in America is right there. Now, I'll tell you this. When I was in Marine Corps base, 
67% of Marines were right here. <laughs> Listen, the neighborhoods that many of you grew up in, you're probably right there too as well. And because people don't realize, how many times have you heard somebody say, listen, I'm 18 years old, didn't realize for the last five years, I've had the power uh, electricity bill in my name. I've had Comcast in my name. I'm only 18. I didn't realize that. Why? Because your parents realized they needed credit too. And since you were fresh, had zero credit, right? They were able to use your social security number and get the lights turned down and get the cable installed and get the Wi-Fi installed. This is some of the weird things that happen when you realize about the lessons of money in your bad experiences versus the good. So I hope that these type of videos, as you're watching this, these videos on the Seven Figure Squad, you're able to learn from my bad experiences, so therefore you can have more good experiences in your life. Okay, so here's some enemies when you're building your credit score. Your credit score is the most annoying thing when it comes to these type of things. It's the most annoying of the three, okay? It's, it's the ones where, uh, your credit score is like you work hard at it, 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 and boom, you do one thing wrong and you're set back like six months. It's so annoying. That's why it's so important for you to start that today. So if you want 2021 to be the best financial breakthrough prosperous year of your life, credit score is something you have to manage and mitigate and improve as the year goes on. Now, the thing is, before you can fix something, you got to figure out what's wrong. Before you can win a campaign successfully, you got to know who your enemies are. Are. So here are your enemies to an excellent credit score because if you want to build, your, build and fix your credit like a millionaire, you have to have excellent credit, okay? Remember, remember I was sharing with you that um, I'd sit in a car dealership and, uh, and wait 30 minutes to see what I can afford, what they can tell me what I can afford so I can drive home my car? Because I focus on excellent credit and exceptional credit. Guess what? These days, I don't go to the dealership anymore. The dealership comes to me. <laughs> So what scenario do you want? So here are your enemies. Here are your enemies. Number one, no credit. You've not established any credit. One of the things I've did with my kids, shh, don't tell them. But one thing I did for my kids, I allowed them to be an authorized user on a couple of my credit cards. So therefore, by the time they apply for credit cards, they have some form of established credit. But the worst enemy is they have no credit. So all the people out there say, credit cards are bad, credit cards are bad, credit cards are bad. Listen. It's going to bite you. You know why? Because when you go to apply for that car loan, when you go to apply for that, uh, that home loan, when you go to apply for a small business loan, you go, you go apply for these things, not everybody in America is going to be cash only and cash on hand. So if you want to use this thing called leverage, right? You want to put 5% down, 10% down on a, on a $100,000 home, uh, and so therefore you can borrow the other $90,000 from a bank, that's called leverage. If you want to put you know, a, a $1,000 down for a car, uh, so therefore, you can buy a, a $50,000 car. That's called credit. You're borrowing the other $49,000 on credit. So if you want the interest rate low, if you want a lower monthly payment, less cash flow going out to debt and more to your pocket, credit score is so important. And not having credit is an enemy to having an excellent and exceptional credit score. Late payments. Okay. You know, um, I was listening to Yann Levizant. Okay. <laughs> okay. I admit I watch Oprah once in a while. Okay. So she said... She said, your bank account is a reflection of your consciousness, okay? Your, your cash flow, your bank account is a reflection of your consciousness, but your credit report is a reflection of your attitude. Woo, man, right? And, and that hit me hard because I'd borrow money, I'd have a credit card, or I'd put my uh, a name on the a responsible party signature, right? And then... I get upset they gotta pay it, and I don't pay it, and it now shows up on my credit report as a late payment. Well, guess what? This is a reflection of your attitude. It's a reflection of your consciousness to make sure that your attitude stays in check, but guess what? The person that gets hurt the most is late payments is you. Next one, collections. What an annoying thing, collections. By the way, let's do a quick insert here, because in the preparation of this episode, I did my own check to make sure that my credit was remaining excellent and exceptional. And guess what you know, I found out? My credit score struck, it dropped 25 points. What? You know why? Because I actually have a collection out there from a freaking, uh, uh, they were x-raying my knee and my insurance didn't pay for it. I it did, got mailed to an old address. It didn't forward to my new address. And therefore, they put it on my credit. Check out this phone call. Stephanie, my name, uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah. 
Yeah, so my name is Matt. I uh, looked at my credit and looks like I have a small collection amount there. Who do I talk to? Um, well, you can talk to me, but the phone number you're calling from is from an agency, so it's not pulling up anything in my system. What is your last name? Sure, last name is Paula. S A P is in Papa, A U L A. Um, okay, what are you showing on your credit report? $76. No, it, what it does say, it's uh, uh, both amounts. It does show payment status as current and zero. Okay, so then it basically, it, it's just, you're just waiting for it to fall off of your credit report. You can always call them, because we have it marked as a zero balance. You can always call them and say, hey, this has already been paid. Can you remove it now? So you can just tell them, say, hey, you know, since this has already paid, can you just, you know, Got instead it. of just zeroing it out, can you just, you know, remove it for me? And they shouldn't have a problem doing that. But no, that's the same. I was looking like, wait a minute. No, we reported this closed over a year ago. Okay. So yeah, um, it does take seven years for things to just fall off your credit report. But because they're already reporting it as being paid, you can just ask them to remove it early as a courtesy and they should have no problem doing it. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks for no your help. Problem. Okay. You're welcome. Sure. All right, have bye. a good day. Bye. Bye. So I got to call Experian now. Get that shit off my report. <laughs> <laughs> Weird, huh? Listen, if the money smart guy can have some errors and inefficiencies, well, guess what? You're in good company because I'm on his journey together with you, brother and sister. Number four, you maxed out your credit. You have a $1,000 credit balance, a uh, credit limit, and you have a $999 credit balance. It's not good. What does that show? It shows that banks, damn, he went to go charge up the entire amount and he's barely paying the payments. He's a risk because if we give him $1,500 and they max it all the way out and they have tough financial problems due to the pandemic, how do we make sure we get our money back? We shelled out our cash, but the promise to pay is now not there based on their credit score, their credit history, which is a reflection of that particular individual. So maxed out credit is not a good thing. We'll be discussing here and what to do in the next portion here. Number five, bankruptcies, foreclosures, tax liens. One thing you do not want to mess with is the IRS. Dude, you talking about the mafia? That is the mafia right there, man. They're, if you don't pay the IRS, there is a scene. We, we did a mastermind alliance. We did a mastermind group with our team in Dallas uh, uh, back in December. And we watched a movie called Pursuit of Happiness, which highlighted Chris Gardner. Will Smith played him in this movie. And he thought his life was going, like, as if his life was always, already, already spinning downward. The mother's child left him. He's left to be a single dad raising his son in San Francisco, trying to be a stockbroker and, and selling bone density scanners uh, simultaneously to, uh, to get rid of his inventory to make money to put, a, put them in a hotel room. As if that scenario wasn't bad enough, he owed a bill to the IRS, taxes. And what did they do? That letter brought me back to earth. This part of my life is called paying taxes. If you didn't pay them, the government could stick their hands into your bank account and take your money. Dad! No warning, nothing. It can't be too late. That, that, that's my money. How is somebody just gonna just take my money? Ain't that crazy? They can find your bank account and lock it down take everything that you owe them and unlock it back to you and you have your bank account levied. That's not good. That's, but that's part of living in the United States of America. And if you have tax liens that you have not paid and you owe money to the IRS, you owe money to the federal government, you owe money to the state of Illinois, California, Tennessee, Texas, wherever you're watching this in, and you owe money to other people or you owe money to a bank, you're showing that when you borrow money, that you're not a good person to pay it back. So why should they give you an approval of an application for a new car, a new house, for a new business? When you're showing a history of not paying that money back, back to credit report being a reflection of your attitude. So these are some of the enemies that will take down and sabotage your multi-million dollar aspirations. So what do you do? Number one, pay your bills on time. One of the most favorite things that I love to use is a thing called auto pay. So, and by the way, don't auto pay the full payment, just auto pay the minimum payment. So you say, Matt, I don't really like using auto pay. This is what I initially told myself. I don't like auto pay because, you know, listen, as an entrepreneur, life happens. I don't know, sometimes 
things get automatically taken out of my, in, of my paycheck for my income. And I'm not so sure if the income coming in to automatically pay it. So that's why I don't set up auto pay. That's what I was saying to justify myself not to use auto pay. But since your credit scores are a reflection of your ability to pay, use these systems and technology that the banks afford you to allow yourself some cushion. So therefore, when you auto pay the minimum payment to your credit card or credit cards, you stay in a very good light with your credit card companies. So they report you favorably on your credit report. So whatever debt that you have, make sure you pay your bills on time every month for the rest of your life. Number two, build, if you don't have credit like I did, build a secured card or build a personal loan, a small personal loan. Uh, uh, I remember the, the Marine Corps Federal Credit Union on base or the Navy Federal Credit Union gave me a unsecured loan, personal loan, and they gave me a secured credit card to start building my credit. And I'd open up a credit card with 500 bucks. I deposited $500 of my own money and they said, listen, if you don't pay your debt, well, at least we have the security knowing that if you don't pay your debt, we have this $500 that you put here, so we'll issue you a credit card. What was I doing? I was establishing a history of me paying my bills every month, month, every month, and then eventually over time, over a year, they said, okay, you showed the ability to pay honorably, respectfully, you paid it, we're going to release your $500 back to you, back into your savings account, and now you have an unsecured line of credit. Or would you like to extend this credit with us to set it from a 500 to a thousand, but we'll still hold on to your 500 bucks, okay? So those are some of the options in terms of building your credit with a secured credit card or a personal loan. Number three, ask family and friends. If you're in a, if you're in a bad financial situation, you know, ask them what they do to help build good credit. Now, I say that tongue in cheek because when I started asking friends and family, asked all the fellow Marines, what they do to get their, themselves out of a financial pickle. The reason why I called this lawyer, Susan Stein, in Orange County, California, to file bankruptcy in 1996, because I asked the Marine, what would you do for my situation? He said, file bankruptcy. I did, without realizing that it cost me five years, seven years, to get all that stuff removed and out of my credit report. So asking family and friends that have good credit, hey, mom and dad and uncle, do you guys have good credit? Great, what's your credit score? Is it above 670? Is it above 740? How did you build good credit? And how do we continue to build good credit? So ask from the friends and family that are doing it, not wanting to do it, but ask from the family and friends that are doing it. Number four, be careful with new credit. You know, one of the things that uh, uh, we think is innocent is that you apply for this loan, 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 and you have five or six hard inquiries of, of you signaling to the credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, that you are pulling your credit to apply for a loan. The reason why that's a trigger for them is because they're saying, okay, this person is applying for a loan. What's going on in their life? Are they a risk factor? Okay, they've gotten new credit. Now, how are they using that new credit? You know, back to the enemy. When you get new credit, do you fall into this enemy of maxing it out? If you got uh, 2,000 bucks, all right, guys, let's go out. Boom, $2,000, it's on me. Or using it smartly. Or using it for a future use. Or using credit to build you a history. So therefore, if you've been trusted with the least, you could be trusted with the most. Number five, credit utilization. Okay, by the way, I want you guys to know how blessed you are in this era. Because back in 1996, we had no clue of how our credit score was put together. Until a couple of lawsuits happened, back and forth, back and forth, that the, the, the credit bureaus had to disclose how they put together your credit score. And here it is, a large chunk of how your credit score, of how your 670, your 740, your 800, 850 credit score is established is your payment history. The number one, do you pay your bills on time? Okay, do you pay your bills on time? If you don't, that's a big trigger, it's gonna drop your credit score right away. Number two is the amount of money you owe. It's called credit utilization, back to credit utilization. So in other words, if you have $10,000 of credit card limit, are you charged up $9,999? You've maxed out, right? You maxed out your credit card, you back, back to you maxed out your credit, you're utilizing a large part of your credit. It's not a good sign to the banks. So let's say for example, the key number here is 30% credit utilization. So if you owe money on a credit card and you, let's say you owe $10,000, you want to pay that $7,000 down. So $3,000 is your left owing 
available uh, a used balance, so you're showing a 30% utilization to the credit bureaus. Anything above 30%, it starts, it starts uh, whittling down your credit score. So the amount that you owe, the amount that you owe on your credit cards, also is a big reflection. You can't just say, oh, you know, you know, uh, the, the bank gave me twenty thousand dollars, but. I'm only using $15,000 of it, it's not good. So in that example of $20,000, 30% utilization is you don't have no more than $6,000 of your available credit card limit being used on any monthly basis. Cumulative, not just one credit card, cumulative for all the credit cards. So if you have, if, let's say you have three credit cards, or 10,000 each, okay? 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. One credit card's got $6,000, okay? That's not good. That's not good to building your credit score. You want to you want to lower that down to from six thousand to three thousand, even though the other two credit cards might have anything, because it's gonna it's gonna show credit utilization at a high ratio when they pull your credit report. So that's part of your credit utilization on the amount that you owe. The other three three components, smaller components. The number three is your history. How long have you had credit? So one of the things remember I shared with you earlier. One of the things I'm doing with my my kids is that I'm putting them on my one of my credit credit cards as an authorized user. They don't have access to their credit card. They can't charge up. They can't call the 800 number and say, hey, can you send me another credit card? They don't even know. Shh. Okay? But what am I doing? By the time they go apply for a loan to buy a house, to buy a car, they're going to show a 10-year history of using a credit card so that it's going to fall to them favorably in establishing their credit history. They're going to appear as if they're just not starting brand new. Why? Because I help them as a parent back to ask friends and family. I, I help them establish secretly their credit history. This is 15% of your FICO score. And there are two things that are, are uh, similar, is new credit that you opened up and the mix of credit that you have. So, share with you a story. Uh, we, we, did a, we did an episode of me buying a Rolls Royce for $24. Well, a year ago, two years ago before buying the Rolls Royce, my wife and I are cash flow millionaires. My wife and I, we have a lot of money saved in the bank, but here's what we didn't establish. This, that's why you learn from my mistakes. We didn't establish credit. Everything we bought was cash. Everything we bought, okay, boom, 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 boom. Everything is debit card. We weren't using smart use of credit cards to build credit history. And so we go into a dealership and say, yeah, we don't care if you got stacked cash. We don't care if you got six figures in this bank account, six figures in that bank account, six figures in this bank account. We don't care the fact that you, uh, the, did you show uh, a 1099 that you're making seven figures? We just don't see you established credit history of borrowing $100,000. We don't show you uh, our, our credible person to loan to buy a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or buy a two, $3 million house because you've never had an installment loan. Back to mix. Back to mix. So they want to see these things established on your credit report. Now, if this was 10 years ago, different story. But today, banks are so tight on what they underwrite and what they approve, they want to see documentation of you showing that you have the history of having different types and styles of credit. Personal loans, credit card loans, installment loans, these are, this is part of the mix. These are part of the mix. So when you're establishing those type of things, you want to have a mixture of credit to show that you are a person that is well well earned and deserved to issue a loan or issue a credit card at the highest levels. Now, some of you guys are saying, Matt, listen, I love to build this credit. I love to manage and take care of my collections. I love to take care of these things that may have ruined my credit in the past. But Matt, I don't have the resources to do it, to fix my credit. So it may not necessarily be a credit issue right now, but a lot of people right now during the pandemic, especially right now, you're going in between jobs or indecision or in a career that you're, you're overworked and underpaid or in a career that you've uh, taken all the income that you've had and everything's going right back out, it's going right back here to cash flow. How do you make more money? How do you create more income in 2021? That's why these things go hand in hand. You know, they, they used to say, uh, you, know, you know, cash is king, cash is king, cash is king. I believe cash is king. In addition to that kingdom, you also have to address cash flow and also address credit score. This is the thing, these are three things that help you rule the financial kingdom that you're looking to build. So as I wrap stuff up, guys, number one, figure out, again, what you want. What is it that you want to accomplish in 2021? Do you want to establish yourself in, into one day stepping up into a new neighborhood? Do you want to step up your real estate holdings? Do you want to step up your, your business endeavors? 
have clarity on what it is that you want to do. You want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire through entrepreneurship. Get clear about that. Number two, what are some of the habits you need to break, you need to fix, you need to change? I need to fix a lot of things in the way we saw money, the way we perceived money, the way we saw debt. And I have time to say, Matt, you know, you know, in Proverbs it says that the, that the, 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 the person that borrows is always enslaved to the one that, that loans them the money. True. But if you have cash flow exceedingly what you owe, you can pay the credit balance right off. <laughs> the, the world, world check, the, check this out. I was looking through some tax returns of some nonprofit organization that call themselves debt free. So, for example, they have, they have um, liabilities, and then they have assets, and they call themselves debt-free. And I'd say, wait a minute, you, you have $1 million in liabilities. But you know what they also show? They have $10 million in assets. What? But they call themselves debt-free. Wait a minute, you said you have $1 million in liabilities. Why do you, why do you call yourself debt-free? Do you know why? Here's why. Because at any given point, they can go to one side of the bank, cut a $1 million check, and that debt is gone. That's, that's the way the millionaires play the money game. Because sometimes what you may not see is the other side of the tax code that says certain liabilities are tax deductible. And although you could pay off the debt, doesn't mean you should because then your tax exposure is then a lot more than it was before you paid off the debt. So you might want to keep this debt on. Okay, so in your financial analysis, you got to figure out which part of your debt, your liabilities, is tax deductible and what is not. And uh, in this scenario, just as long as you have more assets and income over liabilities, you decide at any given point how you call yourself debt free. You know, I, I remember um, having this conversation with real estate investors, and uh, uh, he was calling himself debt free, debt free. And to extent, he was right. He had five million dollars in property, uh, and he had one million dollars in liabilities. Okay, but here's the danger to that. The $5 million in assets was a liquid asset. In other words, he had to sell the real estate to pay off the $1 million in debt. So in other words, he had $4 million of equity. It wasn't necessarily liquid cash. So again, you gotta double check what you consider an asset. Okay, number three, what's your strategy? What's your strategy to improve your credit score? What is your strategy? When do you want to incorporate that strategy? Number four, what's your first phone call after this video? What's your first phone call? Matter of fact, drop in the comment section below. What's your first phone call? Is it to somebody to coach you? Is it somebody to guide you? Is it to go to Experian.com and get a free profile? Is it to go to TransUser? By the way, to be on top of your score, there's so many different resources today to help you stay on track of your credit score. All right? Here's, here's, a, here's some of them here you can go to. Here's some free resources around me that you can click. We'll put some links in the description uh, section below. Some free resources for you to stay on top of your credit. And if you want to pay, let's say, 20 bucks a month towards credit monitoring service, it might well be worth the bank for the work. By the way, I'm saying this, I make zero dollars. So don't think that you click on these links below that I'm making money off you. Listen, none of this stuff I make money on. I just want you to, to be one of the people that we help in 2021 have the steps necessary to get you to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. These aren't affiliate links. I make zero dollars doing this stuff. The only benefit I get from you is you're watching this video. And uh, you share this message with the people that you love and care about. So as I wrap up, a couple of videos I want you to watch. Number one, how I turned $500 into a $45 million business. Uh, watch that video. A lot of people said, what do you do for a living? I'm in the life insurance industry. And I took a $500 uh, investment, getting my licenses and, and buying some books and literature on sales skills and entrepreneurship. And I flipped that over 20, uh, the first 12 years, flipping it into a $3 million business. And in the last five, uh, I'm sorry, six years now, flipping that into a $42 million business, but I just started with $500 of capital, and a lot had to do with understanding credit. The other video I want to watch is, what do you do with your stimulus check? So watch this video, how, I, how would, if I were you, take a $600 stimulus check and flip into other things, so therefore down the road you can make millions. It isn't in my industry, there's five other industries there that I mentioned that you can flip 600 bucks and make your $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year, and eventually down the road becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire by you making millions off those flips. That being said, guys, I love knowing your thoughts, your follow-ups. I know a bunch of credit gurus are probably watching this right now. Listen, let's crowdsource this and put together. Let's win together. Okay, I'm not the only source for people to get information on how to improve their, their credit score. So drop your best ways to improve your credit score in the comments section below. Drop your thoughts. Drop your question. You might include it in a future episode. 
Uh, what is your first phone call? I'm curious for you. What's your first phone call? What is your first move after watching this video? Drop it in the comments section below. Listen, if you guys have been watching this on Facebook, you've gotten value from it, please consider following our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you got value out of this, please mash that like button, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. So therefore, in 2021, watching the Seven Squad, we can help you think like a millionaire, we can help you strategize like a millionaire. So therefore, you in 2021 are getting either clicking closer or you become a first generation cash flow millionaire. That being said, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.